you know, it figures that she would wait until the absolute last second, right? Like, gotta, gotta make sure that you take it right up to the wire because they're definitely not going to start the show late, right? Right. No, that, that was the flaw in her logic. Now she knows. Well, because there's a plan, and then there's the backup plan, and then, of course, there's the backup to the backup plan. That's right. Because you make plans, and then shit happens, and <laughs> we were already prepared. Yeah. Just poop. Anyway. But it is uh, April 11th, 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 21 of Get Fact Harder. We, we are legal to drink in public now. Um, just like they do in Louisiana, which we were discussing uh, right before we, uh, we got started this evening. That's right. Allez, roulez les bons temps. Uh, that oh, America. wait. Yeah. yeah. Back to normal English and uh, uh, sans le reverb. Anyways, sans reverb. So, Yona, you were telling me earlier that there were some nasty looking storms rolling through your neck of the woods. Yeah, it was very bizarre. Uh, how bizarre. You know, because they were firing up between Chattanooga and Knoxville and then traveling almost due north directly over West Virginia. That's a little and up odd. toward Pittsburgh. Because that's the way that tornadoes have always never before tracked. Um, just like, you know, the fact that we've now had confirmed tornado touchdowns in and around the tri-state area now. Four days in a row. That's never happened before. But um, we're just having fun. Fuck it, we ball. Well, I mean, they didn't get us here in Texas a couple days ago, so fuck it, why not? I mean, they it. We did have some wild storms uh, on Tuesday come through the air. Tuesday into Wednesday morning, and yeah, then, that was the same one. Oh, it they, was the they, same they one all the way across. Holy shit! No wonder. Super sales. Yeah, I believe it. Well, if you if you listen to TNP Live, the episode that was broadcast on uh, Tuesday night, two days ago, you can literally hear the thunder in the background while I'm talking. That's how strong those storms were, and that that wasn't even the strongest of all of the storms. That came later. Like while I was asleep at like three or four o'clock in the morning and I have evidence uh, in, in my ceiling to prove it. You know, I'm going to just go out on a limb here and drizzle and say, Yona, not the only one. This is a new segment. I'm going to start called Yona, not the only one when it's rainy. Don't even care if it's like flashy and bangy and boomy, just the constant rain pitter patter shit. You know what I'm saying? I sleep. Like a motherfucking baby. I sleep in a fetal ball like I've been smoking dope with Willie Nelson for 15 motherfucking days in a row. Because, you know what I'm saying? It takes over two weeks, or as our British friend would say, a fortnight for the Yona to finally go fetal ball on Willie. 15 days. Anyway. Yeah. Well, what, what woke me up uh, was actually the the drip. It, it wasn't the the rain outside because I'm like you. Uh, that usually helps me sleep even more. But it was the the drip from the ceiling down onto the hardwood floor. The repetitive pat 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 pat. Like m- my brain doesn't work right, and it like seizes on shit like that, and it'll bring me out of a dead sleep in like seconds. Oh, oh, you know that you, that that pat 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 sound that just kind of made me think of that that time that O.J. Simpson gave that interview, and at the end of the interview, he went into the dressing room with a knife uh, up behind the lady with the knife and did the whole yink 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 yeah. yink yink. Yeah. Um, because you know I, I had, had a to sense of a humor, you know. 
I had to mention that, you know, when, when good old uh, Grimmy was uh, Grim Reaper, Grimmy, he, he prefers Grimmy. You know, if, if you're cool like Grizzle and I are, just like Bill and Ted, you know, we've done Twister and Game of Life, Monopoly, you name it. We've done the whole board game thing with Grim Reaper before. Grimmy, he hangs out sometimes. Anyways, Grimmy called me up. He's like, hey, man, I was playing my claw machine this morning. And, you know, I wanted some breakfast, pulled out some orange juice, some OJ. And I was like, oh. And then later I heard OJ died. I was like, oh, he meant that OJ, the Orenthal OJ. Yeah. The uh, juice. Because, you know, apparently he took ill with a sudden, rapidly metastasizing turbo cancer hmm. but at least he didn't die from the coronavirus because he definitely backed that thing up uh, oh yeah but anyway oh, yeah. uh rest well, he has, in peace, he had, OJ. i believe the post is still on twitter uh right now as a matter of fact of oj yeah. going to get his shot and it's That's it's right. not just a, a still image there's video too oh yeah yeah, he was a, yeah. he was he was totally ride or die, you know. And I mean, well, he was a method fits, actor, you know. Yeah, if yeah. the cancer fits, you got to call it quits. That's what Johnny said. That's right. That was a good one. Hey, taking that long final ride in heaven in the old white Ford Bronco. That's right. <laughs> the, some of you, some of you in the audience, uh, unfortunately, are not old enough to to understand. Uh, just how big of a tragedy this is in our world. You see, before there was Juice Newton, there was Orenthal James. That's right. And the best part of all is, when he gets to the gates of heaven, everyone's going to be playing like they don't know anything. <laughs> Norm McDonald's been up there for like, what, over a year now. Is like so they years. know it all. Yeah. Because, I mean... No one went harder in on OJ than some good old Norm Macdonald. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. He never, I, I can say one thing, rest in peace, Norm. He never, ever missed an opportunity to dunk on OJ. No, no he didn't. Never. It's like layups to the Globetrotters, you know what I'm saying? You know the generals are going to lose. Anyway. If you don't, sorry, spoiler. Um, I mean, to me, that was one of the things that made Norm so lovable, you know? And like, the he, fact he was that, always you know, willing to take that shot, no matter what. Very self-deprecating humor, kept his pain to himself, you know, slowly died of cancer for nine years and didn't tell anybody, you know? Yeah. That, that, that's pretty gung ho. Hell, I wrote a song Again, about it, dedicated it to Unlike him. OJ, <laughs> who made his cancer very public, as a matter of fact. I don't know. Did I ever share that with you? My Norm MacDonald song, Turd Ferguson, Sarcoma? Oh, I know you have. And I know it's probably in the vault. Uh, I bet it is. I can check. I don't know. I don't know. So what's it called? T-E-R-D uh, or T-U-R-D? T-U-R-D, Turd Ferguson, because that was the character for the uninitiated. Turd Ferguson oh, was the apparently not. Burt Reynolds character that Norm MacDonald would play on the Celebrity Je uh, Jeopardy skits right. on SNL when like Will Ferrell was Alex Trebek, and then here would come Norm MacDonald with the big fucking Burt Reynolds hat. <laughs> so do, do you have the turd Ferguson? I do not. So it was a hit jib. Yeah. That's right. We'll have to find it. Uh, I now, just, now people want to know. They want to hear it. I just uploaded it to uh, Rumbles uh, about six hours ago. So it actually worked. Oh Here really? Go to Discord and send the link. And I, I don't know if it's on Bandcamp. Uh, 
Okay, here's the link. Copy. And paste. And of course, you know, the when I ended up when? um mixing it and everything, I had to put like uh intro and outro with Norm on it. Now, I did release this track on album 20 uh yeah album 27 maybe it's called Aaron's Run but I can't find that album anywhere so I mean well I shared it on Telegram in one place and it's in the middle of a long mix um but uh anyways yeah I, I, man i really need to get that i've just really been slacking on bank camp lately i haven't uploaded shit that's all right i've been smoking a lot of weed though to be fair so i haven't well, getting uh, things yeah. done then it's all even it's all good that wouldn't work and besides i don't want to run out of things to do that, that's the worst thing of all then the boredom sets in never bored Always too much shit to do. Great place to be. Try to stay there. You know, most of these funerals, uh, hold like, on. a funeral, you know? Yeah. And you know, most of these funerals, I was planning on like, doing a, touch, a couple of Cajun pirouettes like in the and, uh, uh, backwater Petro like. state we love to call <laughs> La Louisiana. I've heard of other ones. Let's have a party. But, uh, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Whoa, I'm saving whoa. the Andouille oh, blood sausage and the beignets and all that shit right and now, the Mardi Gras beans and all that stuff. That's for the latter half. You know, that, that's the dessert. Uh, unfortunately, first, um, thanks to those assholes at Jekyll Island back in 1913, we all got to do our taxes right because it's totally voluntary. Um, we were talking about this earlier. Um, Remember those uh, movies with the guy that made the uh, sound effects with his mouth? Are you hearing this? Got, uh, Michael yeah, Winslow is his name. That guy. Hold on, you know. Uh, you know. Uh, police Academy. So the guy Tackleberry on Police Academy well, turns were you out he works that? for the IRS. Were you hearing that? Huh? The music. Were you hearing the music? No. Huh. Oh, were you playing music? Yeah, I was playing the video. Oh, no, I didn't hear it. Huh, I wonder what? why. Hmm. That's very odd. Huh. You know, there is another way. That's true. We did we did test drive that before. Let's see. Oh, I can do the screen share. Yeah. I can try that. Turd Ferguson. And, and if this don't work, I can play the motherfucker live. Bam. All bases covered. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Oh, wait, don't you hit me with no commercial. There's one simple. Oh, no, no, I don't do commercials. Don't do commercials. When I have my. Uh... Oh, 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 oh. That's good. That's good. I... All right. So let's make this fully screening here. All right. Does everyone see his mug there? The man from Moose Creek, Ontario. I can All right, see let's it, yeah. When I have my uh, funeral, you know, yeah. and you know, most of these funerals, uh, crying and uh, sad and everything like that, and uh, uh, that's what I like, you know. <laughs> I don't want. I've heard of other ones. Let's have a party. Ah, ah. Whoa, whoa. No party. There'd be a lot of party days later, but right now, this is. The, I'm dead. <laughs> I mean, you know, people should be talking, crying. <laughs> Aaron. 
Time's gonna run Milk sing back Blanket tied up Rivers and feet track Hangman's town Just cut me down Off the river bank Jeopardy show Don't you know Turk Ferguson Sarcoma Boots Creek, Ontario Live from New York Update show Ships of diamond, ships of gold, friendships to hold. The best man I ever knew. All of us is day one crew. We all laughed as we died. Nine years of cancer you had Burt Reynolds had Arrowhead at my boots Saturday night special Red House Roots Longest end of the weekend in our Sunday suits Best man I ever knew Fought to a draw in Pasadena We all laughed as you died Nine years of cancer you had Milk's in the back Blanket tied up Riverton beat track Hangman's town Just cut me down Off the river bank Jeopardy show Don't you know Turk Ferguson Sarcoma Old Dad run hell, but didn't holler run. I'm Al's greenhouse, but the gate on a floor. Well, there's pins out of thing, W holler, oh. Jesse Stewart, Canada's had its way, Jim Bill's horse of rain. I think a solid gold ship would be very valuable, uh -huh. or a solid platinum ship. Yes. A, yes. Ship, a ship made only of diamonds. I don't know if it would float. I don't know. But, uh, you know, that would you would think that would be your most valuable ship. But you know what, sir? It is not. You know what your most valuable ship is? What is that? Friendship. <laughs>I think I figured out what the problem was. Oh yeah? Yeah. And now I've got a delay on my headphone that I gotta fix. This is crazy. I'm having all sorts of issues. Thank you, uh, Streamlabs, for introducing uh complexity 
into the proceedings you know, I this did, evening. I did finally make music videos for those other two songs. We'll leave that. Uh, I don't know if I want to show the gratuitous violence on that one video, the Nine Inch Nails remix, because um, just judging upon what you can see in the videos very clearly there were animals that were harmed in the making of those videos um you know because honestly you would think that the video for seven nation army with the bears fighting and everything Mm -hmm. you would think man that that that's that's pretty bad but then again it's fucking bears Two grown ass bear fuck you think they're gonna so but when it comes to the video for Cave Up with the cats just tearing each other apart, it's that's a bit much. It's a it's a bit much. I have a you know, and so I thought when I went to make the video for the other one, since they were speaking Arabic at the beginning, I thought, you know, I've gotta get this air I've gotta get this Palestine album put out. Because it's got all, you know, I've got like, now I've got like 14 Palestine songs with this last one, you know. And I I was just thinking like all of the videos that I have of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank are all like, you know, really depressing. I mean, it's either showing them getting bombed or it's showing them starving. And so I thought, you know what? Why don't I make a music video to about showcase dancing Israelis? All of the great places to see in Rafa and Gaza, like all the best tourist sites. Um, and so that's what I made for um, Chip Seas. And uh, unfortunately, as of the uh, airing of this show, all of those sites are still indefinitely closed for some reason. Anyways, back to you, uh, Trevor. Yeah. What, what what has been going on in that part of the world this week? I haven't heard a whole lot about what's going on over there. Uh, as far as I know, um, Israel has a right to genocide um, itself, and they're all Hamas terrorists anyways. Next story. Yeah, but is anything going on? Did they stop? Did they quit? Oh, right. Well, they're taking a pause. The uh, inch dick force or whatever it's called. Um, incel detail, uh, friends. Um, I- IDF. Um, the Israeli okay. offensive forces um, are taking a break from their occupation of the Southern Gaza well, Strip. They've been they at prepare it for, for a, a later while. invasion of Rafa, which is totally yeah. necessary because Rafa is a hotbed concentrated zone filled with jihadi toddlers, even jihadi embryos and zygotes, um, which, you know, um, just like Texas uh, children in the womb, they come out already armed. And dangerous, yeah, and legged as well. Well, uh, depending on how much phosphorus and DU they're exposed to. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of them there now, because that's where everybody got herded, right? Right. So, like if there weren't a whole lot of them there before, they're there now. So that makes sense. Um, it's just weird yeah, that like barely. I was going to say, and I can't remember what it was now. Chet. And it was you funny, go back too. Drizzle, what? Not even... Yeah, you just go back 100 years ago. And Gaza Strip, West Bank, all of what is called isn't real or Israel or whatever. Um, you is know, or isn't most real. Jordan and parts of Lebanon and, and what's now Turkey and... Um, Iraq, all of that was just Syria. And it was connected yeah. to Mecca and Istanbul along the Hejaz Railway, and the Ottoman Empire was doing their thing. Um, 
But then Lawrence of Arabia happened, and you know, thanks yes. to um, MI five British intelligence and MI six, and you know, what a MI five James Bond and <clears throat> so MI five is the domestic agency, right? Right, like our FBI. Right, they, MI6 they, they just do fuck is the equivalent of the CIA. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, MI six vice versa. Yeah, it's it's, it's the same thing with uh, the new prisoners. Six is the um, foreign side. Coop is domestic side. Gotcha. That makes sense. So technically, Coop is five, but he prefers fifth, like F I F. Yeah. Anyways, fifth and six. Um, shout out to the new prisoners. Anyways. I meant to uh, I meant to ask six like where you know where the the title came from and all of that and why he goes by six and all that stuff I just I forgot because there was a lot going on with the storms and uh, I was high tell you what drizzle yeah. when you go to a Chinese kitchen number two just down the block from his place look at number six on the menu it'll all make sense yeah Good shit. Learn to eat with chopsticks, folks. Um, meet your new owners. Learn some Mandarin or Cantonese or Fujian, what, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Definitely going to want to learn to to write in the uh, Hansu, or as the Japanese call them, the Kanji. Anyway. So before we get away from the Israelis, uh, were you ten? Were you tuned in for AM Wake Up this morning? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so did yeah, you, you know I'm not going to miss Texas Slim. I don't hey, know. I got to get my know, beef dude. intel report, dude. I I don't know. I just, I watch it every morning now. Every morning that it's on, like it's it's a habit. Like Working I get I get upset if, if it's not on. Shout right. out Amarillo. Anyway, well, we learned this morning that the Israelis have now obtained a permit for sacrificing their red heifers beginning on April 22nd. That's right. That's good news, right? Yeah. I'll take my hat off to that because you realize with the red heifers, we get that antichrist in here and you'll find out why all these Christians love Zionist Jews so much because then that signals real bejeebus to descend from the heavens. Well, it's a flying saucer. We'll get into that later. I've discussed it before with the whole extraterrestrial thing. Again, right. moving on. <clears throat> so he's going to, you know, red heifers, cues, the evil one, the antichrist, who then puts up the bat signal. Bejeebus comes back, knocks down their temple, kills all Jews. And all the Christians then get to go live in Gaza and enjoy the brand new pier that we're building for ourselves. See, now it all makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you, you brought it all back around there at the end. Yeah. You see, you see, I, I always tie it up with a bow, just like yeah. a surveyor. Notch the tree, paint it, tap in the peg, plant the cornerstone. We're done. Next. But, well, so my question is, with the permit having been issued now, does this make it government-sanctioned? Like, the, is this the government giving their blessing and saying, yeah, we want you to do this? As a matter of fact, we're, we're going to allow you to do this. We're going to give you the privilege of a, a document uh, that looks official that says that you can do this. Well, to be fair... When you disembowel the entrails for the burnt sacrifice to honor Satan, obviously, obviously they have, you know, the state has to check this out. You cannot honor Satan properly if you're not properly licensed. Any good Jew will tell you this in Zionist Israel. It's all about, you know, you know what? What kind of Talmud are you feeling right now? Anyways, um, and that was was it Israel that struck the the World Central Kitchen people? Um, yeah, accidentally. 
across three vehicles and a mile and a half and about 38 minutes of nonstop oop. Same thing as like the oops when they accidentally saw the monster-sized American flag over GTR-5 USS Liberty on uh, June shit sniff in 1967 or what the fuck ever. That's um, right. And they practically did. sank it, yeah. and you know it was like I don't know, what was it, thirty-four or sixty-eight. I, I, I don't know. A whole bunch of sailors killed. Another oh, yeah, hundred um, in the sixties, I think. Wounded was it sixty-eight killed and something like that. I think they were uh, going for seventy-two and but, didn't quite. Uh, it. Turns out once again, oops, my bad. Yeah. Well, did you know, or maybe I should ask you this way. Do you remember about two years ago, maybe three years ago, when Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, among other things, was just going and handing out $100 million to to various people? You know, as I guess as part of like his his philanthropical promise or whatever. Ah, uh, yes. More remember that? Philan- phila- philanthropaths. Correct. Philanthropaths. Correct. Like, remember, he gave $100 million to uh, Van Jones. Yeah. The, the sellout Uncle Tom on, what is it, CNN, MSNBCIA? I don't know which one he works for. One of those. One of the news newsy channels. I know if you really want to know the best and most intellectually articulate bullshit about Donald Trump going these days. Yeah. Van Jones. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. Totally fresh take on some TDS. You know, it's like four day old salad, but the dressing on it and the bacon bits are so good. Fuck it. I'll eat that brown slimy leaf. Anyway. Well, here's the, the interesting thing. (laughs) The, the dude, but no, this is really cool. Check this out. The dude that started the World Central Kitchen, I don't remember what his name is because it's not important. Uh, his to me. name is Jose Andres. Okay. He's a famous Spanish cook and um, works with Spanish until. Did I say that? Anyway. Yeah. I didn't say anything. That's, I, I'm going to take your I, word uh, for that because I didn't actually care enough to pay attention to any of the stories of the thing that happened because I, w- I knew why it was in the news. Uh, but moving on. So. Jeff Bezos, when he was running around just handing out money to random people, uh, gave $100 million to this Jose Andre guy, right? With and, World Central Kitchen. Right, and he used that money uh, to start World Central Kitchen. Again, Jeff Bezos, who totally doesn't work with the CIA at all. Or Mossad. Other, other than hosting the CIA's uh, servers through AWS. And I think he has a couple other contracts with them as well. Those might be, we might not be allowed to talk about those. I think, I don't know. You know, honestly, when I think of Jeff Bezos, two thoughts come to mind. Number one, Bezos y abrazos, right? Kisses and hugs in Castellano. Mm -hmm. Uh, Spanish can or Mexican or whatever you call that language. Um, And then the other thing would be, He's literally, literally the fucking perfect Bond villain. You just have to spell his name J E F E Bezos. Hefe. And then it's Hefe Bezos. Yeah. Blam! Bald head. You know what I'm saying? Lex Luthor's bottom bitch to some like Bezos uh, alpha male type fucking genocide energy. Yeah. Bro. I mean, you know that. Bezos and Musk and all of these um, ghoulish creatures are just, um, oh, I, I'm sorry. The attorney has said that, that uh, yeah, redact the next section there. Okay, edit. Okay. So moving on. I mean, just isn't it, isn't it an incredible coincidence <laughs> that this dude's business uh, is, is the one that mistakenly gets... Uh, Bomb the fuck out of, I guess, is the best way to explain what happened to it. Right. Yeah. 
I love to see where these folks all invest their money. Um, now I'd like to think that uh, we can get some new sewing factories into Haiti and Ukraine. Palestine's next. Oshkosh, but Josh. Anyways. Yeah. Well, you got more money uh, for global, uh, Clinton ready global bowl. initiative. Yeah. <laughs> Tailor made workforce. Yeah. So, meanwhile, um, turns out the uh, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, also known as the FISA Act, oh, I heard we to were all good on that. They took care of that. Americans from yeah. uh, undue, you know, white spy, black spy, mad magazine hijink type stuff. Um, turns out. It had a uh, sunset provision, uh, and no. like that it would date end? is coming up in like uh, I don't know, three days or something. So there was a panic at the disco music fans, and uh, all out full court press because uh, we gotta get this shit um, <clears throat> reformed and codified, you know and not have this temporary shit going on and to the rescue jamal bowman apparently uh, did he pull the fire alarm again he couldn't find his way to the fire alarm and pulled a yes for that vote instead um but there was a revolt amongst the republicans and there wasn't enough democrat seance power to overcome the nose so the uh maneuverings once again by big johnson from the uh, petro backwater state of louisiana were not enough to finagle this fisa no reform bill through without any um debate or you know no voice vote no roll call vote just uh you know suspend the rules for this suspend the rules for that so you know it's really weird if you try to watch C-SPAN 3 or C-SPAN 4 these days and listen to the parliamentarian and the motherfucker at the dais going through the order of the day and literally almost every single motion begins with a uh, motion to suspend the rules and do this. Motion to suspend the rules and do that. Motion to suspend. You know, I finally Why got do you have to suspend the rules to do shit? Why even have these all these fucking rules? Well, right. If every right. single fucking motion has the non sequitur of fuck all the rules. Now we're doing this. Fuck all the rules. Now we're doing that. And April fifteenth coming up, folks. Don't forget to voluntarily do your taxes. That's right. Get back fuck, to you, Drizzle. Fuck all the rules and pay your taxes. <laughs> or, or as we like to say in Latin here at Grand Theft Worldage. Um, in omnia paratus, irumabo nos partium. Um, right. In all things, we're ready, ready for everything. Fuck it, we ball. That's right. Oh wow, there's actually uh, people showed up to uh, to watch tonight. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Woohoo! And shout out once again. Wait, did I already shout out fifth and sixth at the TMP because they'd be rebroadcasting this on the Rumble. Yeah. Throughout the week, man, it's like a bomb ass pay per view channel you would watch at the Motel Six. Keep the lights it's on pretty, for me, yeah, it's pretty nice. I've got quarters for the bed. I tuned in and uh, caught a replay of myself on the Peasants Podcast. Boom! That was wild. I was Boom. like, "Holy shit!" I'm on the TV. I know it's weird. It's like, you know, you're at a La Quinta, and you're like, you know what? This makes me want Denny's. <laughs> Luckily, there's one in the parking lot right here off the frontage road. All right. So I, That's what I really miss about driving in Texas. You know, Texas that? has this thing called frontage road. Um, and basically, Some where places any do, yeah. fully controlled access uh, interstate freeway type situations going on, um, because not all of the freeways in Texas are even interstate highways. You know, some of them are just farm to market roads that have mm -hmm. to be six lanes and then frontage roads on each side. You know, like FM 544 
Park Boulevard, which used to be a two-lane backwater and is now an eight-lane monster across North Dallas. Um, shout out Collin County. Anyways, um, these frontage roads, you know, when you're in the more rural parts of Texas, like say I-30 from Texarkana down through New Boston and over to like uh, Greenville and shit, Sulphur Springs, you'll be in bumfuck and there's just some like single wide trailer on the frontage road miles to the next little off ramp to ramp down to the frontage road. Dude, in the single wide, it's like, fuck all that, man. Got me a Ford F-150, bud. So he just starts driving off the main lanes of the freeway right off the shoulder and down to the frontage road to his fucking crib. And so you'll be going down the interstate and you'll see people just making their own driveways off the interstate onto the frontage road. And then yep. Because yep. it's Texas. Well, yeah. But that's what living in Texas is all about. It's awesome. Make your own fucking ramp off the interstate. Damn right. Hey, text dot. Suck my balls. Anyway. Yeah, make, make, they can come in and remove it if it's such an affront to them. Fuck that. There is one thing I have to worry. I have to warn all motorists. I guess every one of these episodes, I have to warn motorists driving in the 50 states because driving in the 50 states is not the same as we discussed earlier in the situation with like, for example, New Jersey and the whole jug handle thing. Been over that. Go back to previous episodes. But when it comes to Texas, there are these things in the road. Well, that, that was that was the video that got us banned from TikTok. Yeah. Uh, well, the things in the road are colloquially known as Texas titties. They're these huge metal contraptions, sometimes painted yellow. Not always. Um, and so, like, Normally, when you're like on a four lane strode street slash road, you know, it's got like two lanes going this way, two lanes going the other way. It's got a center turn lane and you come up to a main ass intersection with a stoplight. Well, there's a left turn lane. There's two main lanes. There might even be an extra right hand turn lane just to make right hand turns. And so normally when you come up to the left hand turn lane at this stoplight, You've got your little yellow stripe and your little white stripe. Well, in the case of Texas titties, instead of painting a stripe, separating the two lanes going straight and your lane that's turning left, they put these huge Texas titties bolted to the fucking pavement that are made of metal. And they stick up, I don't know, maybe six inches high or about like two it looks like a, a steel turtle in the road or something and there's like four or five of them lined up about every three feet at the end of the turn lane don't hit those with your tires or your oil pan i mean it's why why uh, texas why extra money in the budget maybe only in Texas. Favorite thing of all in Texas, though, is this whole phenomenon with the frontage rows. Because when you get into like a city or something, they don't do the bi directional frontage roads anymore, where you can go up and down on either side of the freeway. No, 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 no. Once you get into town, now the frontage roads run the same direction as the freeway lane. So you basically have the in the internal lanes to the freeway and then like external lanes that have stoplights and water burgers and shit, and jack in the box. And anyhow, so when you get into that situation with your frontage roads, you know, running on, on the, the one way action, very strange thing happens whenever you come up to an intersection. Because now What they do is they'll make the overpass going over the interstate six lanes wide. The four lanes in on the middle of the bridge are for the regular street that's going across. And then the lanes that are on the very edges of the bridge are for these 
U-turn ramps where you can take the frontage road and then bust a left and go across the freeway and then bust another left and be going the other way. And you're going across the interstate on an overpass with the opposite direction of the traffic that's using the overpass bridge. And it's like that. It's weird. Yeah, but it works. They're called they're called horseshoes. Yeah, they have they they can have double horseshoe intersections where you have these horseshoe ramps. Uh, anyway, <laughs> wow, it, it's man. it's different. But it if actually you're not works. again, you know, we'll we'll do this. But actually, I've get seen some of harder, them in. You know, uh, there, you there's some drive places the in United Mexico States. where they have those too. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, you know, it, it, like you said, it's not just Texas. It's kind of a Western interstate type thing because you don't, you, yeah, they don't, no. There, there's nothing like that on I-81 or I-64. No, no, I, no. no those people would not be no, able to handle there, something like that. There's no. nothing at all like connectivity <laughs> no. like that. There would no. be so many accidents. No. Oh, my God. But yeah, so you know, um, this is a good little segment to throw in each one of these shows. You know, as we go around the map of the United States, the um, traffic and highway idiosyncrasies of America. Because uh, if you've never driven in Texas before, honestly, you need to go watch some YouTube videos or something. Seriously, fucking yeah. prepare yourself. Do your fucking homework. Don't just hop on the freeway, hit that fucking welcome center, click your heels, say, yeehaw, we're in Texas, honey. Where are we going? Well, Houston. There are, Where are we at? Texarkana. Oh, my God. There are things you need to be aware of in Texas. That it's going to take 12 hours to drive to Houston. Encounter. It only took 10 hours to get here, and we drove across six states. Right. Welcome to Texas. Anyway. Yeah, but... but yeah, there, there are things that you will find in Texas that you may or may not encounter in other places in the United States. For example, uh, it is not uncommon for me to look out my window here in the studio and see somebody riding their horse uh, right down Main Street. That's right. It's kind of a Texas thing. It's kind of a thing. Same thing with like the... Um... Oh, what are they called up in uh, Canuckistan, Canada? The the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. What's yeah. their nickname again? Uh, Mounties. Oh, oh, those guys, yeah. The Mounties. Same thing. But, but in Texas, they're called Rangers. When the eyes of the Ranger are upon you. Run. Shout out Chuck Norris and uh, Nordic. Find crack. the nearest horse. <laughs> yeah, most cowboys in Texas ride a horse. Chuck Norris is still riding that Nordic track. It's looking good. Work still works out the leg. I'm so high. I forgot how we got here. Uh, my right. brain is so high. I've gone straight to the footage of Chuck Norris fighting um, Lou Alcindor. Before he was Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Well, while we're still close uh, to Jeff Bruce Bezos, <laughs> at least from a from a temporal standpoint, right? Because we were talking about him uh, just a few minutes ago, right? Did you hear about the um, the discontinuation of the Just Walk Out Amazon technology? You know, the, the smart technology that they were going to be able to put into all the Whole Foods and eventually, like, every store everywhere. Yeah. So that you can just go through the store and, like, oh, I want this. And, and then like, just walk out. Yeah, my social yeah. credit score that says I can have these. Point. and Yeah. And then you just walk out. Right. No, they're shutting that down. Turns out the AI is not smart enough to follow you around the store uh, and, and you know, tag everything that you pick up and put in your basket because it's not actually AI doing it. It was like a thousand people in India that are watching. Uh, yeah. 
because they had cameras like everywhere. I mean, like they couldn't, I guess they weren't smart enough to do like RFID, you know, so that like when you're actually putting it into the basket or the cart, it's tripping the RFID reader. And I guess that was too, too much, too complicated, maybe too expensive. There there actually already is a just walk out program. Uh, I'm not endorsing (laughs) shoplifting. I'm just saying it happened. No, that's called five finger discount. That's right. Yeah. Been caught stealing once when I was five. Am I right, um, Perry Farrell? Anyways, um, shout out Porno for Pyros. Oh, shout out Perrette's Bernstein. And Jane's Addiction. <laughs> but yeah, it, so is that how all of like the Agenda 2030 uh, own nothing and be happy, happy smart technology is, is actually going to be working? It's well, just yeah, like a bunch I mean, of dudes we're going to own nothing and be happy. Going, yeah, I don't know. They have to own so much of everything that they're miserable, which then requires our constant surveillance. Well, yeah, Makes but that's sense. that's what I'm saying. It's like they're selling it as uh, it's going to be these uh, machine learning uh, things, entities, non-human entities that are going to be like running everything behind the scenes. That's, that's the marketing campaign that we're being given. Right. But is it all just going to be like fucking smoke and mirrors and take our word for it and, and never well, fucking I think question this it? machine learning to really take off. You need to remember to always translate it into Bengali for all of the machines that are doing the work in um, Mumbai. Anyways, Like why? Why is this story not getting more traction? Why aren't more people talking about it? Well, you know, it, I'm just glad that there's a few rickshaw drivers out there that don't have to wear out a pair of flip flops every three days anymore, and instead they're part of um, AI machine learning now. <laughs> And, you know, one day he'll make enough money off that gig. He can move to, um, you know, Nacogdoches, uh, Texas, and start making uh, Slurpees at the uh, 7-Eleven, sending all kinds of money back to Mumbai. Shout out um, Nacogdoches. (laughs) Yeah. Turns out that's actually a place. Anyways. It is. I've been there. I I did not just make that up. He didn't. Actually, I have like, been there. I I can prove <laughs> that it exists because I have been there. I've also been to the middle of the desert in Mexico, so that probably tells you a little something about me. I love the Southwest, though. I think oh, it's yeah. beautiful. You know what I really miss? The endless fucking summer. Oh, dude. Oh. Oh, Latin America. Oh, the expat life. Oh, the memories. <laughs> Although I got to say, um, no offense, um, amigos, but uh, weeds up here is a lot stronger. Anyways, uh, just saying. Oh, you must not have been getting it from the right people then. Well, I'm sure there was probably better weeds to get. I, I was getting decent weed, but. Um, you know, even like, uh, cause you know, they got the uh, cannabis uh, clubs in Barcelona uh, uh, where yeah. they speak that Catalonian shit, you know, um, cause uh, much to my surprise, you know, I get my, I, I get on the internet, I figure it out. And I tell the old lady, I'm leaving the hotel room. I'm going to smoke some weeds. So I go to the fucking Barcelona cannabis club and I get in there and I'm like, all right, you know, if they don't speak English, no problems. Se puede traducirlo. You know, I can speak the Spanish. Get in there, he's motherfucker. Bonas, we're not talking about those shoes, Whoa, 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 what the fuck is this? What the hell? Bonas, we're not talking about the shoes, plow. Well, what? Oh, Catalonia. Catala. Catala. What? What? Catalonian? I don't want any cantaloupe. Fuck that shit. I came for meat dishes only in the tapas. What the hell is that? Fried gravy balls or whatever the fuck that is. Uh, but then, you know, and 
don't want to go back to the fucking oh what was the name of that place Los Rampas or whatever it was the where all the fucking gypsies rob you blind right there in Barcelona tourist trap anyways um so I, I get in there and that's the place where they do it yeah so I'm at the cannabis club, you know, because you got to pay like twenty dollars to have a membership card. Now you can legally go and smoke inside this cannabis club, and that's how they did it in Barcelona. So they have a special there, building where you have to go and smoke your weed. Right, right. Wow, You're not allowed to smoke it outdoors. Um, Las Ramblas, Las Ramblas, R A M B L A S, Las Ramblas. Sounds right. You're in yeah. Barcelona. Don't go there. Oh, um, don't go unless there. Unless. Right. You're packing like, you know, Charles Bronson type, you know, got the sock full of pennies. And um, uh, what what's those movies Charles Bronson did? Death Wish. Yeah. Unless you got a fucking Death Wish like type piece, big 38 or S and dubs or something. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're packing on some GL to the OCKs. Don't be fucking with that Los Ramblas action in Barcelona. So anyways. Yes, decent. Then I'm like, all right, fuck it. We're going to Amsterdam, honey. Let's go to Amsterdam. So we end up in fucking Amsterdam. I go to this place called um, Cafe Siberia. You know, and it, you got to watch your spell. Interesting name. In Amsterdam oh, on yeah. the sidewalk. Because it turns out there's three different sidewalks beside every road. You're like, what? Follow with me. Three Wait, one for men, one for women. Uh, no, one, one for, for pedestrians. One for bike traffic going this way. One for bike traffic going that way. What? Um, and because every bike path is two lanes, and they have like some of the bike paths when they meet each other, meet each other like a freeway does, where they have an overpass with bike lane ramps. To the other bike lane because there's fucking bikes on bikes everywhere, man. Holy I'm shit! I'm not gonna dude. be able to see this in my lifetime. Holy Thanks, shit! COVID. Like, I, Thank I you, walked Daddy out of the government. fucking Help on Hoffestrasset or whatever the fuck it was because we landed at shit shithole or ship hole or whatever that fucking airport was. It's actually nice. It was not a shithole. Sheephole. Sheephole. Um, what it was called. Sheephole. Sheeple? Chipple? Sheep. S H I P. Anyways, so you go to the bottom of the airport. It's got a train straight to the fucking Amsterdam Central because Dutch is basically English, but double every vowel. Um, so, you know, Amsterdam Central with three A's or whatever, you know, triple A rated. So we get out of the fucking step right out of the train station. All I hear is ling, 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 ling. See the fucking bikes, man. I'm like, not just step into like Hong Kong 1920. What the fuck is this fucking New Delhi? Like, god damn, what the fucking and not just regular bikes, dude. Whole bunch of these bikes be rolling around with the trike action. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they you know like what I'm that saying? Up there. two yeah. wheels on the back with like a whole fucking hot dog or falafel stand or yeah, whatever, man. man. Yeah, like whatever you can fit back there. Everything. Uh, it's all good. They got they got traffic lights just for the bike path. Because there's so many oh, fucking... Oh, wow. So they get to move, like, even if the cars have to be stopped, the bikes yeah, can still and, be and going. That's it, crazy. Because the, 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 the stoplight has causes all signals sorts of problems. for pedestrians, signals for bikes, and signals for cars. Oh, my God. And some of them have also have signals for the... the um, Subway cars that are driving up and down the middle of the street because they still got rails in the streets. Their vehicular and I call homicide them subway rate cars must be it's off not like the a, charts. It's not like a trolley with just like one little trolley thing you climb. It's, it's a whole ass um, light rail. That's what it's called. Light and rail. And they got it's all of this going on subway. at the same time in the same space. And so you got these fucking... Light rail trains hitting this fucking rails that are in the middle of the cobblestone street. And you got the little fucking clown ass cars that are all two meters wide. They're zipping back and forth. And then fucking bicycles. And they finally get into Amsterdam and smoke his fucking weed. God damn. 
hanging with these two cool ass motherfuckers from Germany from um Stuttgart. Anyway, so these two homies Stuttgart were in Cafe Cyber. They go roll up the weed. They're putting fucking they got the paper filter that they put in one end. They're making a big fucking spliff, you know, bigger at one end, like a baseball bat. Captain Caveman. And Forty seals it up. He's putting tobacco over the whole thing. Right. Spliffing it up. I'm like, what's Mox do? You know, what the fuck are you doing, man? It's like, oh, this is man, we smoke it's in Deutschland. And, you know, first time I'm like, I'm wanting to taste the weed, and all I can taste is the fucking Prince Albert's nut from a can or whatever the fuck you put on it. Um, got a pretty good buzz, so got some of that smoke. I think it was like 15 euros a gram, which worked out to like almost $20 a gram or something. Wow. And it was meh. You know, it was decent. But um, finally we flew out from Barajas to Mexico. Cancun International Airport. Mexico in the Yucatan. Shout out Mexico. And uh, fucking Aduana, man. Goddamn Mexican customs. Don't ever fly into Mexico. Um, swim, walk, or drive. Uh, my recommendation. Yeah, <laughs> flying out's fine. The drive. whole problem is flying in because then you got to deal with the Aduana Mexicana. <laughs> You'll see. Anyways, um, so Cancun. <clears throat> Finally, I'm like, man, you know, I really should smoke some weed. So we go to this one place where I'm getting necklaces. Like, like uh, where I got this one. And this one. Cancun. So we're in this place. Dude just takes one, looks at me, and says, Get us Malta? <laughs> Por supuesto. Get us Malta. Um, uh, tonight's Spanish lesson. Quieres Malta? Hmm? Want some weed? Do you want some weed? Yeah. Um, and then the ro- or, I mean, ro- technically, uh, it would be like, do you want wheat? Por supuesto. Of course. A fucking course. Um, right. Claro, muy claro. Uh, muy chévere también. Um, very cool as well. Uh, th- and that's your special Scrabble international word of the night. Chévere or chévere. C-H-E-V-E-R-E. Be cool like that. Totally cool. Um, so, all right, well, he's like, we... yeah, man. And, you know, he breaks it out. It's a nice looking fucking piece of bud. But I'm like, but then I'm thinking, man, my whole life, anytime I ever smoked Mexican, you know. And I'm like, it's, I've had the Barcelona weed, which is the original Spanish flavor. And then I've had the Dutch flavor. Um, but now it's just going to be a big letdown with this Mexican. And so. Got this pipe here, the 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 Craig Pasta Jardula pipe here, and and broke it out, inaugurated because we'd just gone to uh, the stone temples of the Maya there at um, Chichen Itza. Um, turns out the three little pigs were not able to uh, blow it down by the hair of the chinny chin chin. Chichen Itza still standing, um, and and then Too Tulu, far, yeah. and then we go back to Cozumel and back to or not Cosmo, um, Playa del Carmen and Cancun because uh, had to do the hard rock. I don't know why. Wasn't disappointed, really. It was a good experience. And so I go to break it in. Got high as complete. Fuck balls. And then we go right down the street to this restaurant, Mexican restaurant, um. Oh my God, dude! Fucking street tacos, and we're just pigging out. All of a sudden, we have you know, she just got her plate. I've just gotten my plate. In through the door walks a twelve-piece fucking mariachi band. Oh, nice! Deck the fuck out. Fiddles, trumpets, trombone, tuba. Oh my God, it's giving me fucking. Goosebumps. And that's where I got this necklace. Um, oh my God, dude. So I hear I got the munchies. 
eat my fucking asshole off just through just oh, 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 everything. They're, they're bringing this plate after plate, and every plate, the portions are just, God damn, man. I got the munchies like, man, got the fucking 12 piece mariachi band, the whole Del Seno over there, cranking out just one after another. And then they got, uh, I say 12 because there's like uh, three women singers and a hmm. male singer. Bro, that was fucking wow. slapping because we were like at staying at well, this hotel the, in the, the main hood part of Cancun. Yeah. You know, we found a really cheap hotel that was a nice rated hotel, but it was a Mexican chain in the hood ass part of Cancun. <coughs> About literally on the opposite side of town from like Tourist Row and Gringo Landia and all that. Oh, yeah. So you were actually. And so like we in were at a Cancun. local yeah. fucking joint that's you know? the best man and it was like the locals all came in at like when they were done working it was about 9 30 9 45 at night all of a sudden a fucking 12 piece paint just walks in through the fucking door and as they're walking in, they all just start fucking singing and playing and you know literally like two hours later they get done playing and then everyone leaves the restaurant it's like almost one o'clock in the morning well that was one of the great things about Acapulco. mexico man like, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what time it is. They're just living life, bro. Well, no, on, uh, like, Friday and Saturday nights, there were dudes that would uh, walk uh, up and down the Costera, which is the road that runs right up along the beach in Acapulco. Uh, and they would be doing, they'd have uh, fucking big-ass speakers and shit with them. They'd be pumping out, like, karaoke and shit. And they would they would literally just walk up and down the coast era, bar to bar to bar, you know. Party never ends, my yeah. friend. Yeah, uh, you do. Fuck you do man. a couple songs at, at one place, get some tips, move on to the next spot. Oh, and then lather, dude, rinse, and repeat. All over That's Latin a hell America, of a way to spend a Friday night, man. There is a phenomenon on Friday and Saturday nights that happens all over Latin America, and it's from like about eleven p.m. to maybe three or four a.m. These fucking street vendors these food vendors that literally like you know one o'clock two o'clock in the morning friday night saturday night all of a sudden boom you come around the corner this motherfucker's got the churros mm -hmm. motherfucker over there is cutting up some el pastor with fucking goat meat chivo fucking tacos yep. and, that, and this motherfucker right here he's got the flan and all the fucking all the like custards and shit and then the other dude's got the monster fucking white corn cobs and he's putting some type of fucking cheese on it. you're like god damn i've never seen a corn cob that's 42 inches fucking yeah, long this or however doesn't much happen in america is. ladies and gentlemen i can verify like, this what the fuck and every night like oh my god yeah where are these motherfuckers all week or All like, of a sudden, one o'clock yeah. in the morning, boom! There they are. There was uh from from my apartment, my first apartment in Acapulco. I go down a block and over a block, and there was no there was no business, there was nothing official uh, set up there. But if you were there at specific hours of the day, you could get some kick ass pork sandwiches, and they were like oh, you know man. five pesos a sandwich or whatever. Oh, man. Yeah. That was the thing in Cuenca, Ecuador, where I was at. They were known all across Ecuador for what they called pernil. P-E-R-N-I-L. Pernil, which is roast pulled pork. Yeah. And so imagine, if you will, we get down to Cuenca, and their local delicacy is roast pulled pork with a hot relish. I'm like that's like I didn't even leave the fucking south, man. The only thing was they didn't have barbecue sauce. What? So I went the South Carolina route, mixed up some mustard and some honey and some barbecue sauce, added it to the fucking perineal. Out of sight. Some of that gold barbecue, like like that Charleston type barbecue. I'm you know. Others are more partial to the North Carolina, you know, vinegar, ketchup-based type. You know, think like meatloaf. 
type, you know, that type, um, yeah, different. Yeah, definitely different. different. And, and then, of course, you got the best barbecue there is on planet Earth. That hot brisket fucking Texas barbecue. Of course, everybody oh. knows Texas barbecue is the best. Everybody knows. Although that. there are some in St. Louis and Kansas City that would argue, but uh, everything These they know, they took people have they took mental from illness, all right? Yeah. We've already established this, especially the ones in St. Louis. St. Lunatic. Right. That's what they're called. Uh, Dylan wants to know how high. Oh, yeah. Uh, right now, hmm. Gosh, you kind of caught me off guard there. I know. Um, I would say right now I'm higher than uh, an unscheduled landing Boeing aircraft as we speak. There was another one. Another one. You posted it like what two days ago? Southwest Airlines. Oh yeah, with the the uh, engine cover came flying off. Yeah, cowling. Uh, the cowling went flying. Yeah. Made a loud Boeing when it hit yeah. the ground. Shout out Batman. <laughs> <laughs> who's ready to fly yeah i don't think i'm going to be getting on a plane again not for There's a long so long time other stories that are going on that are just getting buried and like as if it's boring. i mean there's so much shit going on and like i go to check the news and they're talking about fucking baby dog again like oh my God. seriously Oh my god! I can't. I just, and then you know, oh. I try to read a newspaper article, and now the newspaper articles have dumbed it down to the point of like it's a second or third grade, second or third grade reading level type. So and then it's full worse of typos. Than it used to I'm be? like, does, does does no one working at the newspaper proofread? Like basic spelling errors, basic punctuation. I'm like. Is it just me? I mean, just sloppy stuff. Like, no, they've already gone to even, uh, Chat GPT. Even misspellings in the titles, you know, makes me wonder if all of these articles are being generated by humans They're or not. just um, uh, Mumbai. Well, no, those are humans too. They they just um, they're a little browner. No, it's been proven that they're not using humans to write half of the articles anymore. Yeah. Even even some of the terrestrial radio stations that are still in business are now starting to switch to automated personnel. All right. Shout out iHeartRadio. <laughs> imagine imagine when they have to rebrand as iPacemaker Radio. <laughs> yeah. Brought to you by Pfizer. That's going to be out a rough that myocarditis. Oof. Oof, no, man. I, you know, there's so many people injured, so many cancers. Well, and then the kids don't want to work. Yeah. So what are they going to do, Yona? They, they had no other choice. They had to, to use the technology in order to keep the business going. They keep cranking out news. Well, it's it's infotainment, except without the information or the entertainment. Right. Oh, you better clip that out. That yeah. that's a pearl of wisdom right there. Yeah. It's style and substance with neither. Uh, Scooby snack, please. <laughs> Oh man! So are are we going to do a uh, a proper send off for Orenthal James? Yeah, you know I. It really, you know they they aired it again this morning on AM Wake Up. That bizarro fucking interview. Yeah, where you know it started out. As just basically a normal, you know, hey, bitch, here's my book pitch. Um, but, boy, it got weird because he keeps switching between first person and third person. Um, kind of 
like the Yona, um, but in a much more sinister way. Uh, and it was just very, like, even I think after that interview, there were a lot, if, if there were any people on the fence about did OJ do it or not, yeah, I think that interview definitely pushed a lot of people over the fence and right into a pile of blood next to that book that he was bringing back. Um, I would hope so. Poor Ronald Goldman. Anyways, um, <laughs> it is moral of the story, one of the most just take the book back to the fucking library, dude. Jesus, made. man. Yeah. This chick's got an a ex-husband that's an NFL player. You know, what are you doing? Anyways. You know, yeah. of course, we're leaving out the key player in all of this and why OJ's actually dead. It's Cato Kalen's fault. Yeah. Fuck you, Cato. Anyway. He's still out there somewhere. On somebody's couch. Probably. I probably. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's that's what Cato's <laughs> known for. He's the guy on the couch. And, and remember, folks, pour out a little liquor. Remember Cato. Thug yeah. life. Yeah, I'm told uh, Nicole Brown could uh, not be reached for comment on OJ's death, but uh, I am told that uh, OJ will now rest easy knowing that Nicole's murderer no longer with us. Yeah, yep, Just like Florida, orange juice is dying. And only in COVID land could both of those jokes be made at the same time. Otherwise, it would have just been too preposterous in the before It's test. all about timing. Yeah. All about the timing. You know what That's I'm right. saying? I mean. Well, OJ was a comic legend. You know, he was, he was in all of the, the Naked Gun movies. Um, he was always cracking jokes, trying to get people to laugh. Yeah. You know, he was a showman. He had a stabbing wit. And a killer sense of humor. You know what I'm yeah. saying? A very, oh, no, very I, too piercing, soon. A very too piercing soon. charisma. You know? It's too yeah. soon. Yeah, it's he could really soon. overpower your defenses. <laughs> I remember. Dude, you know I, when you spill the OJ or when the OJ spills, it's going to be quite a miss to spell up. Anyway. I don't, I don't know why this stands out in my life, but I have a very specific memory of being in Colorado in the autumn of 1995. Ooh. I was living out in Colorado Springs, and I'm outside uh, with my buddy, and his wife comes to the door of the house. It was like, y'all got to come in here. They're about to deliver the OJ verdict. And we, of course, all went rushing inside to find out what the verdict was because it had been such a long trial and was dragged out in the media for such a long time. It yeah, occupied big, the national conversation for such a long amount of time. Big letdown for Marsha Clark. You know, Judge Ito went on to do great things. Um, in the, uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, VH1 on Judge Ito, uh, where are they now? But um, as for Marsha Clark, um, didn't turn out so well for her. And of course, it no, just added happened? to the bona fides of Johnny Cochran. And um, not quite sure what happened to, man, there was such a powerhouse legal team there, man. Three of them, really. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's where we got the Kardashians from. You know, because yeah, Daddy well, Kardashian. the Kardashians are in with uh, one of the uh, ones, um, Shapiro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But not Ben Shapiro. The other one, Robert. Aren't they all related? Probably. Yeah. The Shapiro's actually on the Heaven Hill Distillery in Bardstown. Yeah, it's it's like how uh, Dr. Sidney Gottlieb and Dr. Scott Lieb are not related. Don't. Why would you think that? And for those that have a fine bourbon or whiskey on standby, uh, now is your cue for a drink. Um, back to you, Drew. Well, it was an MK Ultra reference. They don't if they don't already know that they need to drink on each MK Ultra reference. I mean, I don't. They're probably watching the wrong show. 
Shapiro should have been your clue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or Kardashian, which leads right back to Joshua Pasternak. Anyways, because uh, <laughs> training is important. You know, keep your mind right and yeah. your body. Uh, you know, and, uh, look, I, I can I can describe the American education process this way. Um, shout out John Taylor Gatto. Okay, so primary school is about um uh we'll call it bowel obedience where you know you basically have to learn to you know keep using the bathroom no more diapers um and uh that may vary depending upon uh the number of uh students in the uh class year coming up through uh but then when you get to secondary school it's all about physical obedience right and if you graduate with your diploma then you can go to post-secondary education which is all about mental obedience and if you manage to go all the way through graduate school god forbid you might actually be able to make it all the way through life without ever having an original thought higher education pays if you're a loan company anyway yeah well there's there's uh, a lot of money in public education it turns out who knew well you know it used to be free well yeah but it wasn't as good when it was free right you know when you, it's always it. better when you have to pay for it yona I mean, if you're, if you're going to go to the fine altars of the priest class the, these days, just like, um, you know, ancient Babylon or, or Mesopotamia or the infertile crescent or whatever it's called. Um, no, it was fertile crescent. It's infertile now because of the uh, depleted uranium. Anyways, Correct. Um, you know... <laughs> I, my last experience on a college campus, like all up in it, was at uh, Western Carolina University in Cullowee, North Carolina, and uh, lasted about a week, and it was absolute, complete, and utter madness. Complete and utter fucking madness. Well, it was North Carolina. But I mean, like going to the uh, freshman orientation and was it everything in the mountains else. or was it in the lowland? It's in the mountains, right by the Smokies. Oh, right well, by the there you river. go. There you go. But I mean, I'm talking about this is like a D1 university, and I'm going to freshman orientation in a big old fucking auditorium. You know, this is like uh, God, was it 2024? that in 2017 or oh maybe five years ago anyway so i'm down there and you know it's kind of like yona meets um rodney dangerfield back to school and so you know i'm non-traditional age student in the big auditorium that would be fun orientation that would be seriously and funny they're going through all the shit you got to do with your laptop and uh I showed up literally with a trapper keeper and a bunch of paper and like pencils and ink pens and everyone else had like um laptops because it was like I don't know, twenty nineteen or something. <laughs> and I showed up with my fucking um stone tablet and my hammer and chisel. <laughs> like you should have I'm gonna keep notes with a trapper keeper. Permanent notes. <laughs> Like, well, you can use one of the computers at the library, I guess. <laughs> and it's like, um, well, I'm just going to email you your assignments. And it's like, right. Well, I'll go check the email at the uh, library then, and then I can write it down in this notebook with my pencil in cursive. That no one else can read. So I know, I know that no one's going to be cheating yeah. off me. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, too, is you, you, and actually use that to your advantage yeah, in the future because you know that nobody who is under the age of like probably 35 now can read yeah. cursive. Can't read it. Yeah. Just chicken scratch. Might as well be Chinese. Yeah. 
the only the only reason that that I can still read it is because that's what my mother wrote in exclusively and my parents got divorced. So I had to read a bunch of shit from my mother growing up because she would write it out and send it to me. Nice. And you got to love female penmanship. Always more curls and squirrels. And, you know, oh, yeah. Not all like jaggedy and choppy. You know, there's, it's amazing to see that just looking at handwriting, you can kind of tell if they're young or old or where they're from or male or female. Just looking at, literally just looking at the handwriting. There, there's a whole science to that. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I always get compliments on mine. And sadly, that's kind of a dying form of human expression. You know, penmanship. Because, you know, most people now when they communicate or when they send mail or receive mail, you're either on a phone or on a keyboard typing away or tapping away instead of, you know, literally squiggling and looping and crossing T's and dotting I's. And penmanship. It's, a, it's, it's kind of a dying form of communication. Oh, yeah. why I wrote that song last week in Braille just for the depth. Which was beautiful, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You gotta listen to it with the Dr. Dre beats. Oh, yeah. I, I still don't even know, like, how, how you were able to, to channel that much genius into one song. You feel your way through it. The cover for Def Jam recordings. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> well, you know, Yona, I I did some research this week since I had some some extra time, not doing the regular broadcast. You know, taking uh, some time off for my sanity. Yeah. A little bit of rest and relax and relaxation. That's right, dude. You wouldn't believe how much I got accomplished today. Anyway, uh, that's not why we're here. I did some research this week because I had a burning desire to know, right? And it turns out climate change, the reason that we have climate change, white men with penises. Well, if we can get more penises chopped off, that's going to reduce the overall um, male toxicity. I see a path forward, and it's it's on the DEI. But we're, we're going to have to that dispose is a of those members, and and doesn't that contribute to uh, you know the decline of the environment? Well, there is a way to counteract the decline of the environment. And and that is the bug. You're gonna have to eat the bugs. But we'll change. Always the weather back together. to the bugs. What the hell? What well, is this fixation with bugs? We have the power. We do. And you know, it's actually a delicacy. And you know, in parts of Mexico, chapulinas or or um, grasshoppers taste great with chocolate and cinnamon. Um, I I never tried that. Um, it, 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 it's a little province um, spelled like you might want to say a waxica or something. Oh, Oaxaca. It's actually pronounced Oaxaca. Yeah. Oaxaca. O A X A. Yeah, it's something like that. I yeah. think I got. I think I got close to Oaxaca, but uh, did not go through it. I was a little disappointed that I didn't get air, to go air, through Oaxaca. Air quality is kind of bad there, though. Oaxaca, it- Luke. Yeah. Pretty rough. Get you in the sinus. Lot, lots of like plant or something shit going on in the air down there. And they've got their strange Oaxacan dialect too, because there's like hundreds of indigenous tribes alive and well in Mexico, and they all speak completely unintelligible dialect. Pretty awesome. Imagine that. Pretty 
y'all. In fact, one of the official languages of Mexico is uh, Nahuatl, which is uh, Aztec. Just like the word oh. Mexico itself, Mexico. That word is Aztec. And another Aztec word, probably one of my most favorite words in the lexicon of all human speech in all of recorded history, that would be marijuana or marijuana. Aztec for um, That's a, pretty a good weed word. that gets you drunk. Yeah. Or marijuana. Thanks, Cortez. Well, I don't, this show would not exist without it. That's right. Smoke more of the weeds, you must. That's right. Oh, speaking of which, folks, the, the shirt is in the boutique right now. Uh, you can go and pick one up yourself. Let me see. That's right, folks. And, you know, you could choose autonomy, but it depends on how much you like being a pet. Fetch. Roll over. Doing anything for you? Uh, yeah. Then check out autonomy. Show notes. They're down there. They are. It's true. Grand Theft World at, I want to say, Agora? Or oh, Agora? I, don't, I can't even, I don't Ag- remember at this Agora? point. Agora? Agora? Let's see. Or, uh, an orgy, uh, an orgy.com, I'm something a, like that. It's definitely not dogfart.com. Don't go there. Yeah, but that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I've got on right now. And if I, if I could actually turn around... So Boom. that you can see the back, you would see that it says "Get Back Carter." That's right. And, and watch this: add the hat and the cigarette, even match it. Yeah. Boom. Is look, you could wear the Yona on That's your right. chest, all over town for a day or or maybe more. You know, just depending on how you do things. And you know it's I'm that not going to judge your your uh, laundry cycle. It's that funk hybrid sativa weed because you can tell that the because the water leaves are different colors. That's right. You know that you know the flowers on that bud's going to fuck you up. Link you'll is in so the hard. show description. You'll literally get back so hard you chip a truth. It has been known to happen. So. um you know, as, as always, uh, participate responsibly. Oh, I almost forgot to mention um, the uh, escalating tensions with uh, China and the South China Sea. Oh, yeah. With What's going the on there? Philippines and the United States. Um, because uh, you remember that lady with all the shoes there in Manila? Marcos. Yeah, Imelda Marcos. Marcos. Um, yeah, right, her their husband. financial advisor was George Hamilton. That's right. He is also dead now, like OJ. That's right. Well, he's dead, so you got to be careful, right? That's right. Bill Gates. Um, That's right. So Imelda's husband, Ferdinand Marcos, senior, um, he he kind of got a bad rap. You know what I'm saying, Duterte? But anyways, uh, Duterte. Um, Rodrigo Duterte, um, the infamous um, previous now president of uh, the Philippines, probably famous for riding around on his Vespa and um, putting caps and drug dealers' asses because he was be he like that. Um, he was, was that replaced bong bong? by Imelda and Ferdinand's love child, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who is like super duper far right wing um but it is the like, style uh, of the time i would compare marcos junior to like um maybe like uh is it closer to mussolini or like Hitler like like, on the like, like a jair scale? jair bolsonaro type guy bolsonaro but like the you know the the right wing nut job down in uh, Brazil, um, not to be confused with the left wing nut job currently in power Lula in Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, because um, 
they're all nut jobs. But, you know, I like Brazil nuts. They're really large and meaty nuts. And they melt in your mouth. Am I well, right, ladies? Yona, I would encourage you then to take a trip to Brazil as soon as the opportunity to uh, do that presents itself because... One it disclaimer, appears... don't use X Twitter in Brazil. Not a good idea these days. Right. Or Rumble. Well, here's the other thing, too. Uh, Don't piss starting off that Supreme Court judge. <laughs> next year, I believe, you're going to have to furnish a bank statement to the government of Brazil in order to be able to travel there. That's right. Yeah. And they're going to want to see your social media history first, or at least that uh, Brazilian Supreme Court judge. Probably that, um, too. Uh, yes. Moish Palpatine, or whatever his name is. Um, uh, that's fucking Portuguese, you know, God, yeah. could you take the marbles out of your mouth, please? Anyways, um, isn't, but isn't nice it outfit. Also, isn't it also next year when it takes effect that, uh, anyone traveling to countries in the European union have to apply for permission first? Isn't, isn't next year when that all starts as well? Uh, yes, but it's not until 2030 that you have to ask nicely. <laughs> but, you know, starting, you know, and here in a few months, you are going to have to ask, but you don't have to ask nicely. So you can say, are you going to let me fucking in or not? Hurry the fuck up. And you, you'll still get a response. But after 2030, you better ask nicely. or uh, There will be consequences domestically because at that point you know because of the presence of the uh then you know sovereignty will be completely gone because I, i'm getting ahead of myself i just got out of the time machine i don't want to ruin the ending for everyone anyways no go ahead and ruin it that's fine no, they're already here i check uh norfolk <laughs> all those Military troops on our old military bases. No speak of the English as first language, you know. Anyways. Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because the uh, the FBI director was actually in front of Congress uh, today, I think. Today or yesterday. Uh, saying that there is a growing fear among law enforcement officials of a coordinated attack. Inside oh, my, the United Iran. States. Yeah. I don't know if he specified a, an actor or not. Well, uh, Mike Pompous, uh, Mike Pompous, Pompous Asshole, asshole? Yeah. did uh, uh, further elaborate, as well as um, Tom Cotton, uh, that, you know, it's Iran. Iran so far away, but closer than you think. Try it, Fox Seagulls. So that's what it's going to be, huh? Well, I mean, the only way we can keep BB Net Yahoo in power is to just go ahead and start World War Three with Iran, uh, and we don't even—they've well, been to doing start their it. damnedest. Israel already has. I mean, what else is it going to take to goad Iran into being the bad guy? How many, you know, supreme commanders of their Revolutionary Guard, and how many fucking <laughs> Diplomatic missions and peace missions and embassy buildings do we have to fucking bomb until that, like, you know, do something? I, I guess they're more reserved. Come on, Iran. Bail them out, dude. Bail them out, bro. Bail them out. I think Don't they tried as well. Besides, you know, I mean, at least. You know, I think even though Netanyahu looks finished politically in Israel, we've still got that ninth inning stretch in Rafa. Yeah. He might still come out well, and we still enough got... of a monster for most of the monstrous Israeli public to approve. We still it's not got just him, the big folks. sacrifice coming, too. That's 11 days away. Yep. Oh, wow. And that's when the Rafa invasion is scheduled. Uh oh. I thought we were talking about the same thing. Convergence. Uh, everything's converging. Look out. 
it's, it's converging like Mary Magdalene. You know what I'm saying? Well, I guess the good thing is we don't have to wait long to find out, right? Wait, it is it is it heresy to allege that Jesus got pussy? Does Jesus have to be celibate? Because my muscular Caucasian Jesus on my poster here is not putting out celibacy vibes. No. Definitely not is with the ripped? package on here. Loincloth is not doing much to hide the, the, the little Jesus. I'm just saying. No way. Wait a second. The little savior. He, he He's definitely putting out sexual vibes, but not necessarily hetero vibes. I just remembered the whole thing with the 12 disciples. Because we just celebrated Easter. and Well, was it over a week ago now? Yeah, it's it's been a little bit. Why am I still celebrating religious festivals? Oh, it's, 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 it's Muslim Yona, Eid Mubarak. I'm, I'm yeah. about to finish up my Ramadan. Sorry. Well, yeah, and for... Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, for all the magicians out there, we're still in the middle of sacrifice season as well. We got, right, abracadabra. Ooh, Mecca, like a high, like three uh, more weeks. Mecca, honey, ho. Yeah, it looks like they're they're going to really send things out with with a bang uh, this year for sacrifice season. I so, mean, that's, that's what it's looking like. If you have a plate of freshly sacrificed red heifer meat, and you're enjoying this wafty smells of the burnt offering of red heifer entrails. Does that pair with Red Bull? Because it seems I like I you're never already it. doing the red heifer Satan sacrifice. Red Bull's going to be just, just it's just going to fit right in there like OJ's hand in an isotoner glove. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're, you're going to want to be hyphy like E-40 at a Bay Area slam rap fest. You're going to want to be bouncing off the walls at that point because here comes the Antichrist, right? Yeah. And the destruction of all Jews. So Bejeebus come back. Well, you cannot have the second coming of Jesus without the Antichrist, Jonah. Everybody right. knows that. If you want a second coming Jesus omelet, you're going to have to crack some Antichrist eggs. That's just the way it is. And it starts with the red heifers because it's steak and eggs. Sorry, and of that course, was a delayed reaction. Kosher dill pickle. Right. Yeah, what's up with the pickles? That was fucking weird. You know why they say pickles are so juicy? Because they're kosher. Now you know. Oh, and the mattresses, yeah. Got it. That's right. Yeah, that that's uh pickle tickles leave a, a smudge and a smear. So all right, when 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 they do this thing and they they sacrifice the cows and whatever else it is they're gonna do. because uh, again, I don't pay real close attention to this ridiculous nonsense. Well they've got their but, license now, their permit. But, well, yeah, well, when nothing happens, then what? Like, I don't even know exactly what is supposed to happen. But, like, when when that thing that they're expecting doesn't happen, what then? But it's the celebration itself that it's the happening. Just like when they opened up the Gotthard Base Tunnel in Switzerland. And they had all the goat horns and the devil dancers, you know, and the tunnel workers there. Same thing with the CERN crew when they were doing their um, medieval hoofed animal um, choreography. Um, there's just something about the polypony, the cacophony of goat horns when properly tuned that truly pleases Satan. We know this. Ask Alistair Crowley. Nothing like a five-part harmony goat horn to usher in the Antichrist. Because he has taste. It's not all minor chords. 
lot of major chords there. Oh Some yeah. Of the tunes are actually happy. Fifths and sevenths and stuff. That's right. Yeah. Like that one happy song that uh, Chris Rankcast was going over, right? Where where they 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 got their car charity going on. Oh my they God, man! Words. Um, you know, and it's actually kids begging. Um, one one of the Antichrist demons. Well, it, yeah. Back and Basically, kids begging for money. Yeah. Well, it's kids begging for money for adults. So for it's it's for a good cause. Sure. Dude, if you that must not have been on like uh ultra repeat wherever you were in the two thousands. It was where I was. And I I heard that shit like at least five, six, seven times a day. To the point where I'd never want to listen to it again, ever in my life. Not not even by accident. I never want to hear it again, ever. And I purposely avoided that segment on AM Wake Up because of that. You know, I I just, it seems like everywhere I go, I just can't get away from this whole Israel-Palestine conflict, even at the stoplight, just a few, what, an hour and a half ago, at the stoplight. And I look over on both sides of the stoplight, and there's four different panhandlers now, two on each corner. And because now it's not just one, and some others have come in and and just moved in and started to occupy some of that curbage for catching coin. Now you see like different lines of Is there that much coin out there to catch on the sidewalk between different panhandlers? You know, <laughs> and because you know, I, I I guess that's a bad analogy. You know, saying that Israel and Hamas are like panhandlers because it makes it sound like the United States just gives Israel and Hamas money. Um, well, actually, they do. They do. Well, yeah. I guess it is an accurate analogy. Anyway, yeah. so you got these panhandlers dividing up the the curb, you know, to catch some coin off the windows, and um, yeah, and I just kept thinking, you know, I wonder what it's like when you're at a stoplight in Gaza City. And the pain handlers are on the corner, and then boom, flash of light, smoke everywhere, and then like all the buildings on that street are like crumbling, and there's like a big chunk of concrete where your engine block used to be. Um, do well, you I still give the guy on the corner? If the guy on the corner is still standing, do you give him change? Yes. Yes. Well, but you forgot to check and make sure that you still had. All your extremities. Right. Yeah. And don't open the door to Maybe get out. Maybe he already you has your off. change because it's in your pants pocket and your leg is over there. That's right. And blame Hamas for making Israel do this. That, that was the best argument I heard today. I think it was on T-Lab. Ryan Cristiani was like, uh, guy was breaking it down that, uh, you know, this is Hamas's fault for forcing Israel to genocide them. Right. Because logic. Ask Tony Myers. That's basic logic. Well, but by that logic, shouldn't shouldn't we be punishing the Jews then? <laughs> is it isn't that where that takes us? Come on now. Man, that's that's going to be an awesome barbecue on April the world. 22nd. And dude, there's got they got to have some Texans over there in Israel to help because I mean, the red heifers we know came from Texas. And when they cut up all Where that Where else meat, were you going to grow them? You know, they're, they're only going to burn the entrails. That's you the part. Grow them in Oklahoma? Anyway. I don't think so. Up. So, you got all this high quality Texas red heifer meat. Tell me they're not going to have a Texas chef there with one of those fucking grills that you tow behind your fucking F-150. You know what I'm saying? Where you can do full-on brisket, where you got the fucking mm-hmm. paintbrush and you're fucking just glomming that shit on there, man. Oh, my God. You can smell the shit, dude. You can see the char on the meat, bro. Fuck. If you don't know, you really should. For more information, fuck around. 
Yeah. It really is like that, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not experienced it, come on down to Texas before you're not allowed to. That's not a joke. But uh, I'm holding out hope. I am dearly holding out hope that these sites will be opening back up for tourist season here in just a few weeks. Which sites? Uh, the All these awesome tourist sites in a place called Gaza. What tourist sites? You talking about the beachfront property? Yeah. Oh, that's him. Like they, they've got a really nice beach, Gaza City. Um, well, not uh, anymore. Con, it needs to be rebuilt. Con Yunus. Condominiums? Um, yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to put up condominiums. Which, you know, I haven't seen recent pictures from recently. So it, it could all just be a terrible pile of rubble. Hopefully not. Um, if, yeah. Well, it, I mean, if the redevelopment plan is going to schedule, it should be nothing but a pile of rubble right now. Because again, you have to tear it down to build back better. So I have the chip seed up in the queue here. The what? Chip seeds, Cypress Hill and DJ Hyona and oh uh, Gaza tourism site. Four minutes, 34 seconds. That might, that might actually fit. Let's see. And we got about eight minutes. Yeah, just about. So don't forget, folks, this is a value-for-value value show and a value-for-value value system. We look for time, treasure, and talent, right, Adam? Anyways, uh, in the show notes and on uh, manufacturingreality.toTheORGs, uh, you will find the links to uh, give uh, either time or treasure or of, of, or of your talents. Um, for the donationally inclined, as I like to say. Uh, but most of all, most importantly, empower yourself, your friends and family, peers and colleagues and co-workers, and share the videos and the channels far and wide. Yeah. Flip this shit up and put it everywhere. You have our full permission. That's what, uh, that's what media should be about. Clip it, snip it, share it, pass it. Just remember Weeds rules. Pass it on the left hand side, bro. Right. Smack it down. You got herpes. It, wipe your mouth do. first, please. Full disclosure. So, uh, <clears throat> I did look into this, and um, fortunately, most of the sites in this video are in Rafa. Yeah. So they're just temporarily closed. Yet still intact. So, because I, you know, I don't want to just tease people that, hey, on your next vacation, want to go see one of the most authentic parts of the Middle East? Visit the Gaza Strip. They've got beaches. They've got, you know, there's things to do. And, you know, after a day of travel and five days getting through Israeli security, it'll be worth it. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, although you're going to want to take your own food. Anyways, uh definitely definitely let's, take let's your go own ahead and food. Roll this video. Take as much of your own food as you possibly can. <laughs> and uh yeah, I wanted to make a happy video about oh, tourism. It's going to be the United States in 6 months, you realize that, right? Um and so uh I think this video was made last year. Um, I'm going to say before October the 7th. Wow. Uh, too soon? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like, uh, how long before? <laughs> Are we going to get into trouble with this? Is YouTube going to, going to, uh, give us trouble on this? Uh, who gives a shit? It's at the end of the show. I don't think they watched the whole thing. Oh, no. What? I might not be doing it right. Uh-oh. I think you were talking, and you didn't see that it, it must not be working. 
Wait, let me stop sharing and bring it back in. Let's do that. Hold on. Boop. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Boop. And boop. Try sending it again. Boop. Boom. Now, let's see if that did it. All right, can go. you see it now? Yeah. All right, here we go. What's going on, Shabbat? We're here by my favorite ornament in the whole city. I love Gaza. Obviously, if you see Gaza in the headlines, it's all about wars, a year-long massacre, and the siege. But it's not all doom and gloom here in Gaza. We're spending the day to show you the best five things to do and the best five places to go while you're here. I'm standing by the beautiful coastline here in the central port of Gaza. Let me show you what you do when you come here. So things to do while you're at the port. So the first one, obviously, is to fish. Many people come here in the afternoon, they sit around the rocks, and they wait patiently to catch something nice. Others take the boat to enjoy the magnificent landscape of Gaza. And if you look here at a distance, it's the magical Hasseina Mosque. And when the Aden goes, which is the Muslim prayer, there's an amazing sense of tranquility and harmony that presides around the port. Talking about smoking weed and hats in Arabic. For those who don't speak Arabic. no to colonialism sire the mm. ironic thing is 
if, or should I say when, the IDF bombs that war cemetery of World War I veterans, they'll actually be competing in wars in two different centuries. Um, because I would expect the IDF to attack unarmed soldiers who are already dead, because they're brave. Anyways, so I got everybody. <laughs> You want to say good night, Yoda? Yeah. <laughs> wow. What what a, what a way to go out with a bang. That's like literally like a what do they call it? A can opener, a jackknife uh, slam dunk, like Dominique Wilkins from Atlanta Hawks days. Neek. With the big Gumby hair 